back in the shed, this time for Ask GM, yeah? So try and answer your questions. Yeah, it's got some good ones this week, Neil. Really, really good ones, actually. Yeah, keep um, sending them in, leaving them below this video in the comment section. We'll see them, hopefully, and try and answer them next week. Yeah, right, let's get into the first one. It is from Jonah Chitombo, and he says, is it okay, oh, this is a good question, is it okay for world champions to train uh, in different disciplines in their rainbow jersey? So, for instance, if someone's world cross-country champion, yeah. can they go out on their road bike training in their world cross country rainbow jersey. Well, of course um, they can. It's one of those things that's uh, probably a little bit frowned upon. It, you couldn't. I don't know. You can't yeah. race in it. You can't. You can't race in it. Uh, Do you than, ride in your one? Or? Well, I don't have a world champs jersey. <laughs> don't you? Oh, <laughs> Do you? I, well, sorry, I thought we all. Were. Um, uh, yeah, I, mine is a uh, bike trial world championship jersey, so it's not a UCI rainbow jersey. So I don't think it really counts. Um, <laughs> but it, I don't think I'd wear it. No. It's in a frame with the medal. I don't really, it's not something I put on, but if I had a version of it, I don't think I'd go out training in it because no. surely you're kind of kind of claiming I'm world champion at that then. But you can you? buy, you, you see people like road no. especially, you see people buying the jersey, don't you? That's not true. That is terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. Is that thing. true? It, you see it, yeah. People ride in Sky, you know, Team Sky yeah. with the rainbow stripes. It's like, no, they don't. Behavior. You can't buy, you cannot buy rainbows. You can't buy rainbows. That's just what you can't buy. Well, I would agree, but you can. I say no to the answer to this question. No, you shouldn't go out training in your world champ jersey in a different sport to that you've won the world, world champ jersey in. Yeah. It's and even after on. the year is up <laughs> and there's a new world champion, same same rules apply. You can't just wear it. You can no, get, you've got to go to stripes. You can go to stripes, yeah, but you can't be. Stripes. But well, I'm not yeah. sure many people do that. I tell you, it's pretty cool though. I had that on my uh, one of my helmets. Just had the stripes, oh, the stripes. in the corner, yeah. just secret. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, good rainbow, question. Rainbow stripes, rainbow showing stripes. your pride. Yeah. <laughs> well done. That's good. <laughs> right, Aaron Leahy says in relation to the video Neil done a few weeks Did. ago on the Garmin <laughs> smartwatches, I was looking into buying one. Good stuff. They're good, aren't they? We talk about watches quite a lot. Yeah. We get asked an awful lot about our watches. Now, uh, Aaron says there's lots of variations on the Phoenix Five. There's yeah. the five to five f five <laughs> times x. five x yeah and plus options of those three which one does he use i don't want to spend a lot of money on the wrong thing man this is garmin phoenix 5 sapphire 47 millimeter because i had the old phoenix 3 which was 51 so you can buy this in mm. a 51 a 47 and a 42 mm. so this is the middle size because i felt like 51 was a bit big for me yeah don't have the butchest wrists uh, it feels nice. Yeah. I like that one. And I, this, I ride in this all the time as well, and it's fine. I've got, I like that one a lot. I've just got a Garmin computer that's my little gadget yeah. at the moment. I like yeah. that a lot, yeah. So I use this, like a race down Pacifico in it, uh, mm. for gravity stuff. And then I use my computer for uh, cross-country style stuff where I have it on the bar. Nice, nice. Uh, Good stuff. Right, uh, Roly O2, uh, when you have the SRAM access and the Rockshots reverb, can you bar spin without any things to change on the bike? So they're the wireless shifter mm. and the wireless dropper post remote. You've for forgotten two very important things that would definitely still be there. What? The brakes. Brake hoses. The brake hoses, yeah. So you, you could bar spin, but you'd have to sort the brake hoses out. You'd have to have a long rear and a front down through the center. Yeah. Which, Chris Smith yeah. trick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd still have to unspin your rear brake hose after though, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you would, you would. So yeah, it would. Um, you'd have to spin it back, you mean, yes. Yeah, yeah I see what you mean. But it's nice, yeah. they are, it's super clean with just having two brake hoses on your bike, it's very cool. Um, Should we have a look at the older yeah. access stuff? Yeah, let's have a look. SRAM Eagle Access is here. Fully wireless, fully electronic. Made up of a rear mech, shifter, dropper, remote and companion app. Right, next question comes from Samuel MTB. Uh, hi there, I bought a Schwinn Thrasher 24 inch wheel entry level hardtail. Nice. But the track where I ride has many technical areas. My bike just doesn't cut it. I was thinking about getting something like a Daniel bike to handle it better. I'm four for eight, so I'm rather small. Thoughts on what bike to get? Well, four for eight is small. If you're um, if you're young and you're gonna grow, then wait, because the bikes are gonna, you know, you don't wanna get into the wrong, uh, 
twenty six. You don't want to be getting a downhill bike if you're four foot eight and you grow. If you're if you're fully grown and yeah. uh, a four foot eight, then you need to start looking at maybe different wheel sizes. I would say twenty six inch. An older, yeah. well, I guess you can still get free ride bikes twenty six inch. Not many of them, to be fair. Mm. We'll go for an older downhill bike. Well, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, but if, if say you're um, say you're 12 years old, mm -hmm. um, you know you're going to grow. What would be the best bike to be downhilling on or riding sort of gravity stuff on? Oh, that's a good question. I would say oh. go for an enduro bike to begin with, just yeah, so yeah. That it's not as heavy as trying to throw around down. But 26 bike. or no, there's not many of them around. You can, well, women's size 27 and a half mm. bike, they make a um, decent stand yeah, over yeah. and decent reach. So that could be worth looking at. Now, that makes me think, actually. Um, I used to ride a, a an Orange 5. In yeah. a really, uh, it was called the Diva. And it was the women's yeah. size frame. But I rode it because I was doing trials on it. And yeah. it was a tiny frame. Mm. Um, and it was amazing. So it's full suspension, 26-inch wheels. Uh, and it was incredible. But if you're yeah. on a small stature, something like that, like oh, maybe a women's look. size, is maybe a good call. Canyon do the most of their models actually in women's, so mm. the Spectral would be a pretty cool choice actually yeah, for yeah. bombing down the hills. Yeah, and they look amazing. Yeah. Those little frames look awesome. Uh, Bug Boy 15,200. Uh, it's talking about tyres. Remember we talked about uh, rolling resistance versus grip a couple of weeks ago. He's saying, why are so many people hung up on rolling resistance? I would take more grip and confidence in the turns any day. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a better line and more confidence to be faster? Better line and more confidence faster. Oh uh, yeah, I get you. Please poke some holes in my theory. <laughs> Well, oh, I don't know. I would say it depends what you're riding because you mm. don't want to be riding across country all day on really grippy, confidence-inspiring yeah, yeah. tyres, but you could be much, much slower. Yeah, grip in the turn's one thing, but you've got to carry speed over an entire loop or or downhill, you know? So if you're on a, a cross-country loop, rolling resistance feels awful. Um, We've seen Daniel yeah. World Cups won on semi-slick rear tyres. Yeah. Is that in the past. Right? Yeah, really? definitely. A Nico used to do it occasionally. Yeah. It's just yeah. not all about the grip. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's about rolling resistance can make a huge difference. So, you know, I think we did poke a few holes in that theory. Um, <laughs> Try that I tell fast. you what, why don't we take a look at some turns? Let's have a look at how to ride some loose turns. We're right here in Santiago. It's the middle of summer. It's not rain for weeks. So, this is a how to ride dusty and loose corners. Next question is from Dan McCauley, and he says, new bike with SRAM uh, 1x12, and I wanted to get a bash guard. I'm seeing lots of combo chain and bash guards. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem like a chain guard is needed with a one by and a narrow, wide chain ring, but do you guys ever drop chains on a one by uh, I can't remember last time I dropped a chain. Most of my bikes don't have a chain guard, chain guide, or a mm. bash guard. Uh, my new Canon Strive has got, I think it's E13, it's got a bash guard at the bottom and a top mm. chain guide. I guess I would say probably if you're racing enduro, something like that where it's a bit rougher and all the sorts of things can happen where you mess it up and you back pedal and you're mm. all over the shop, that could potentially cause your chain to come off. But if you're just riding, I would say it's pretty unlikely to come off. Yeah, yeah. I don't really need them nowadays, but oh, you can always ride your bike. Mm. For a while, see if it does come off, and then buy one. Yeah, back in the day, the old uh, rock rings used to be like a, oh, yeah. a really cool product that you could buy, but you just don't see it that often. I remember the old, it? yeah, early two thousands, having those mm. massive E thirteen bash guards on your mm. chain ring that were that thick. Yeah, but, big thick ones. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, you don't see that at all. Right, Hene says, uh, could you make some MTB fitness related videos? Bought my first MTB in autumn. I was very excited and started to train wheelies. Oh, uh, I got patella tendonitis from all the pedal kicks. Oh no. Um, I had to lay off biking. Hopefully I can get it sorted for summer. I found out there is different length trank cranks. Uh, major size seems to be 175. Would you run 175? Or They're not? pretty much standard, yeah. 175. Um, does shorter cranks help knee issues? Mm. After all, if you drop saddle, knee angle becomes very tight. Yeah, got you. Drop saddle, knee angle. It does, but I would, I would make sure your saddle isn't too high. Yeah. That can cause problems. Patel is your kneecap, isn't it? So. Yeah. Mm, potentially, if it's, if you're not pedalling sort of straight, maybe your knees are bowing out a little bit. That yeah, cause it I think if you're hurting your knee, you potentially have got the seat too low. Um, and I thought you were going to ask about fitness rated videos. It said at the top there. We've so, done a few. Uh, we've done quite a few about sort of you know training and um, getting prepared for a race. Yeah, I've done. Um, 
talked about this the train I used to do when I raced enduro, some yeah. pretty standard stuff. There's a really great video from Annie Last actually on there the is. channel um, showing you how to prepare for a cross country race, which is yeah, really make cool. A training diary. Check on it. But I think with your wheelie connected uh, question, I guess you're doing wheelie sat down. I would raise the seat, not lower it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Did you see? Yeah. Annie Last has been winning lots of races recently. I have, yes. And uh, with Cape Epic coming up, yeah. could be exciting. Is she racing the Cape Epic? Oh, I'm sure she is. I'm, sure I'm sure she is, yeah. yeah. But yeah, World Cup season coming soon as well. Yes, yes. Um, right, Caden Degenhart. Um, I was wondering what some of my next steps could be for getting a sponsorship in Enduro Mountain Biking. This past year, I won a handful of races in my local trials. Well done. I also sent out some sponsorship applications to a couple of companies, but it seems like no one is interested. Uh, I've had that feeling before. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Um, emails aren't the way to do it, I would say. I've When my last year racing down, I sent out loads of emails with portfolio of what I'd done, what I'm going to do. Didn't get mm. any replies. No? I think you need horrible. to speak to people, even yeah. people I knew. I think yeah. it's better off yeah. trying to form relationships somehow, go and visit in your local bike shop, chatting to people. Yeah. Yeah. Start off with the bike shop, I would say. Bike shop's a really great place to start because yeah. if you because shops love supporting a local rider, they want to be talking about the races in the shops to their customers. Mm. Um, and I think if it's going to work with a shop, you need to hang out there quite a lot and become you know one of the crew if you like. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd say, and this is this isn't easy, but I don't think it's maybe it's not possible to get sponsored these days without a pretty good social following. True. Social following has become so important. There's yeah. riders out there now who've just dropped their racing because their yeah. social platform's so big and they're so powerful um, and they've got this reach that they don't need to win races. They just need to make cycling look exciting. Um, and you can do that just by going and doing it and filming it yourself, putting it on your Instagram or your Twitter or your Facebook. You've got to think what what is in it for that company to support you? Yeah. How are you going to help them and then go at it from that angle? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what, at the end of the day, it's a deal. You know what I mean? Like they've yeah. got to be getting something out of it. And if you've got you know, 30,000 people on your Instagram, which isn't easy to get. If I've got 100,000, mine. Have you really? That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I would love 100,000 people Will on Will you Instagram. sponsor me? Yes. Well, I, well, the, the truth is, right, if, if Neil went out and tried to get sponsored, he almost certainly would because he's got 100,000 people on his Instagram. <laughs> I rest my case. Oh, I'll see you later. Yeah, you don't need to send out emails anymore, <laughs> mate. Not anymore. <laughs> no. Okay, let's do a correct me if I'm wrong, Neil, because we haven't done one M for a few weeks. Wow. Well, yeah, we've this, got a good one, a really good this one. This one goes quite severely wrong. This is Matthias riding a Rocky Mountain Altitude. Oh, uh, no, it's Altitude, isn't it? Uh, in Victoria, Australia. Comes around this corner, hits the drop. The biggest, wow. nastiest OTB you'll see. Wow. Actually, broke his neck. Ow. Bad news. Yeah, but. broke his neck. Titanium rod in there now. So yeah, months later. bad news. Back to, he's going to get back on his bike in six months, hopefully. But he's asking him what went wrong. Yeah, so we've watched it a few times, haven't we? We've slow we, it, we, yeah. we reckon you've come really tight on that line. Uh, you, you're sort of trying to get round tight to the tree and keep a tight line. So uh, tight you uh, duck uh, the yeah, tree. Yeah, duck the tree. And we reckon you should, if you'd gone out onto that berm on the wider line, that would have helped you pick up the front. You'd have carved around, picked up your front, and then just dropped off. I mean, it's a tiny drop, but yeah. it just goes to show how wrong it can go. I mean, I've had big crashes like that, messing up the easy part, the corner, and yeah. actually crashing off something a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, change line, and you can see your front wheel actually sort of goes into a hole as well, and that just yeah. stops the front wheel. Yeah. Game over. Yeah, so slightly wider line, but you know, you can't rewind any of it, you know? So, no. you know, you, you, you're you doing all the right things, you had your helmet on, God, it could have been worse. You've got away with it, good news. Get well soon. Yes, absolutely. Send us a, a send of the week yeah. when you're back on the bike. Not, that would be great to not see. Not a fail or bail. Absolutely, look forward to seeing that. Um, thanks for watching this week's Ask. Um, if you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comment section down below. Ask GMBN, yeah. uh, hashtag Ask GMBN, and then uh, yeah, ask any question. We know we know the answers, and we re can research the answers if we don't know them. <laughs> we know. We'll be ready. We know almost everything. We'll be ready. Um, tell you what, why don't you stick with us? We've got some great videos to watch. Um, I like this one just here. It's Blake racing the Valparaiso downhill in Chile. Uh, a lot of fun, and it's good to see Blake looking a bit scared. Yeah. Uh, how to Shred is over here. Give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Hit the old globe to subscribe. Oh. Subscribe. <laughs>